Hey there, everyone. So uh, this is Josh from Fresh Start Customs. Um, I'm going to show you my latest design print here. I've actually got two different types of prints this time. Um, some people like the dark and gray. Some people like it white where you can color in the words. Um, I actually decided to go ahead and make it just a standard white one, kind of like the Thanksgiving wreath here. And I made one that has a white outline within the engraved this time, just to change it up, because I always like to try something new, just tweak it a little bit. Um, as you can see, I just made random little hearts here all the way around, and then added the little red cut line around it. So we're going to try this one with the engraved, just to save on some coloring time, since the engraved will already be engraved there. And we'll see how it turns out, just to try something new in the standard way. But I'll throw both of these in the name your own price files there just to help newer people out. So if you want to check that out, I'll put a link below so you can see um, if you want, to, you want this specific file here. Otherwise, you can also check out the free files that I have and I'll put that link below too. That way, if you're new to Glowforge and you just want to try something free, uh, check that out too. Otherwise, the name your own price is a dollar minimum. So uh, whatever you want to do, I just do that to help new people out. Um, so here we go. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you the Glowforge interface. I already got it pre-opened here. So if you're new to the Glowforge, you'll just go to app.glowforge.com. And that's where you, you get started. If you want a brand new design, you just click upload here. And we would do the Valentine's Day wreath with engraved letters. That's what I was going to do. But I already have it opened in this tab over here to save us some loading time. So it imports it into the Glowforge UI just like this. And then over here is your different settings. So for this, I'm just going to go ahead and put it on some thick maple proof, game, proof grade. I always do that for my birch wood just to make it easier so I don't have to remember the settings. Um, and if you do use my like, proof grade material, that's where you can select all your different types of proof grade, whatever it is. So for example, if it's this medium bass wood, um, you would just type that in right here and it would automatically pop up if it doesn't show up in the list here. Um, if you are using uncertified material, uh, kind of like I am, which is birch wood from Lowe's, you can manually type in by hitting this button here, but it's about the exact same um, as thick maple plywood, so that's why I'm using thick maple plywood. Um, it isn't necessarily accurate, but it works for me. Um, I just have to tweak the cut settings a little bit, and I'll show you how to do that too. So you guys are kind of learning the ins and outs of both worlds here all at once. And I'll do a easier tutorial going more in depth with that later on. So if you want to hit the subscribe button, check that out, and I'll show you how to do all that. I'm going to try and just do like a basic guide for all the ins and out features. I'd even like to do one for snap markers over there. And if you don't know what that is, you can check out the form or check back here later because I do plan on trying to do something for that. Uh, so we'll check that out. Um, so next, let's go ahead and show you the engraved feature. So for Birchwood, I like to keep it on the proof grade draft photo. That's just how it is completely. Um, so I just leave that alone. Um, and it, it comes out really great looking. So for the cut though, I already have my birch cut settings changed. And if you see, here's the proof grade cut settings that's auto-selected. All I really had to do is change this speed right here to 140, but I already have that custom set for birch cut. You see how it changed to 140 right here, slash full power? So it's the same exact thing, I just went 10 power to less, so it cuts through the wood easier. So everything's identical. Uh, I try to keep my settings as, as easy as possible. Um, and I also put all custom settings on my Facebook page under the notes tab. I do that just to help out new people, even uh, the veteran people who, who have the Glowforge longer than me. Sometimes it's easier just to go on there and check out the settings. 
I think there is a Google document floating around that other people have done, but I've never tested those settings. So I'm, these are the settings that I know that works for different materials. There's about 20 different materials I've tried so far. So if that helps you out, check it out. I'll put my Facebook page on there too, and then you can just click the notes tab. So let's get started on this. Um, now that we have both the engrave and the cut settings selected, um, we should be good to go to hit print as long as it's in the print section. And I'll show you that here really quick too. Um, so for, since we have both of these selected, we can exit out of that and it shows you the engrave. You see how it highlights in blue over here whenever you're selected on it, and then if you go to the cut, the outlines select in blue. So that's how you tell which one is which. And in this case, I don't have a score setting, and I'll go over that in another video, what the difference between score and cut is. But score is basically like an engrave that doesn't cut all the way through, but at the same speed of a cut, um, but it only goes in a cut path. So that's a quick overview, but I'll go into that in more depth with a later video here. So I'm trying to get all of this all in one video here. So I'm just going to try and break it apart here over time. So check out the later videos. So here we go. So this is our design. You can actually pick up, drag, and drop wherever you want. I've got a brand new piece of wood in there, so it doesn't really matter. But I try to keep it closer to the edge. Now, if you do have a machine, um, like if you're new to this and this is your first print, there is going to be a little bit of a difference. Like this isn't going to be dead on accurate right where you drop it at it's going to be my machine tends to cut a little bit to the right so it'll probably land right over here and a little bit down so it's going to probably land right around there too so it's not off by much on mine um, some people do have a, a fairly big difference like some will come all the way out here so you do gotta be careful if you're gonna print the first print just do like a really tiny little circle just to test where yours lands at. Um, and the further you get away from the center, the further it's going to be off. For now, they haven't fixed that feature yet. So let's go ahead and get to the print. Um, off. We're going to go ahead and hit print here. And then you'll hear the machine starting up in just a second. There it goes. Machine's going to scan your material here, and then it's going to hold back to the, the home position. And then once it's ready, it'll let us know that we're ready to print here, and it'll show us like a little print preview. Uh, right now, it's preparing the design. Sometimes this can take a while, so don't expect it to be instantaneous. Uh, I've had to wait on the screen for maybe four to five minutes before if you have a bigger file, kind of like this one. So hopefully it'll uh, kick into gear here pretty soon, and then we'll get this started here. I just kind of wanted to give you an unfiltered uh, realization of what's going to happen here for your first cuts. So what we'll check out is as soon as this is done, I'm going to go ahead and hit print on gear, and then I think I'll keep recording on gear so you can show the see the preview as it goes, and I'll do like a fast motion preview here, and then I'll also do a fast motion of the print. So you don't have to sit here for the whole print and watch it. Um, I'll probably also mute the volume during that time so you don't have to hear the, the laser in your ears the whole time there. Um, if you don't like that, let me know. I can try and throw some music in there in future videos. Uh, I personally don't really need music or need like a really loud uh, laser engraving in my ears, but that's totally up to you guys. I'm going to help you guys out whatever you like. Let me know in the comments below. And as you can see here, this is basically showing you what it's going to do. It's going back and forth. And it's definitely not going to print that fast. As you can see, it's four, 53 minutes here. This is less time than any of the other reefs that I've done. Um, the other two are both right at uh, um, a mi an hour and one minute. So this one's going to be the least amount of time so far. But that's what it's going to look like when it's done here. So I was just showing you a preview of what it's going to do. And as it prints, it's going to show you where it's at in the process on this little uh, preview as well. So we're going to go ahead and print, and I'll be back.
All right, guys, as you can see, uh, I'm back and it printed off and you can't really tell too much on this one, but if you can look really closely right here, you can see how it's off a little bit um, and it's down to the right. Mine's always a little bit down to the right. But this one's pretty accurate, so um, that was just the heads up that I was going to give you there. So I think it turned out pretty cool with the engraves on the inside and then a small uh, white border there. I may color the border in. I may leave it plain. But I think it turned out pretty cool just how it is. Um, so I'll go ahead and do like a little slow-mo shot of it unmasked. I'm going to go ahead and unmask it and uncolored. And then I'll do another slow-mo shot if I decide to color it. More than likely I will color it because I've done the other two in color two. Just to show off what um, what capabilities and what it would look like like that. So uh, I hope you guys like the video. If you like it, give me a thumbs up. Hit subscribe. I'm going to try and make some more of these if you guys like them. Um, if you don't like them, let me know too. Um, let me know what I can do differently or if you don't these kind of videos. Uh, if you like just the actual print itself and you don't want like a walkthrough, I can do that too. So give me a heads up and we'll catch you next time. Thanks guys.